Imagine living in a small village in England, surrounded by peaceful fields and ancient landscapes. Now, picture discovering that one of your ancestors lived here over 10,000 years ago. In Cheddar, Somerset, archaeologists made an astonishing discovery in Goff's Cave, the oldest complete skeleton in Britain, known as Cheddar Man. This individual belonged to a group of hunter-gatherers who roamed England after the last Ice Age. What's truly remarkable is that DNA analysis later revealed that a local teacher, Adrian Target, shares a direct genetic link with this ancient man. This discovery is more than just a cool fact. It's a bridge between the past and present, showing how genetics can connect us to people who walked the earth thousands of years ago. In this video, we'll explore the incredible genetic history of England, tracing how migrations, invasions, and cultural shifts over thousands of years have shaped the DNA of modern English people. From the first hunter-gatherers to the Vikings and Normans, this is a journey through time, told through the lens of DNA. Cheddar Man, discovered in 1903, belonged to a group of people known as the Western hunter-gatherers. These early humans recolonized Britain after the glaciers of the last Ice Age retreated. Cheddar Man's DNA gives us a glimpse into these early inhabitants of England, who were dark-skinned, with blue or green eyes, and likely had curly hair. Cheddar Man's DNA also connects him to a broader population of hunter-gatherers who lived across Western Europe. His mitochondrial DNA haplogroup, U5B1, and his Y-DNA haplogroup, I2A2, are still found in small percentages of modern Europeans, including the British. This genetic continuity shows that even after thousands of years of migrations and invasions, some of the earliest inhabitants of England still have descendants alive today. Britain, at the time Cheddar Man lived, wasn't an island. Instead, it was connected to mainland Europe by a land bridge known as Doggerland. This geographic connection made it easier for humans to migrate across what is now the North Sea, bringing people like Cheddar Man to the British Isles. This was just the beginning of a long history of migration and cultural change that would shape England's population. Around 6,000 years ago, a major shift occurred in Britain's population. People from the Near East, particularly Anatolia, modern-day Turkey, began migrating into Europe, bringing with them the knowledge of farming. This wave of early European farmers reached Britain and forever changed its landscape, no longer relying solely on hunting and gathering. These new settlers began cultivating crops and domesticating animals, allowing for more stable and complex societies to develop. Genetically, these farmers introduced new DNA to the population. They brought with them traits such as darker eyes and new blood types, which started to mix with the existing hunter-gatherer gene pool. In fact, when you look at the genetics of modern English people, you can still find traces of these early farmers. One of the most enduring legacies of these early settlers is the construction of Stonehenge. Though we don't know exactly why they built it, the people who constructed this monument were part of the early farming societies that had taken root in Britain. Their presence marked the beginning of a more settled way of life, laying the foundations for future civilizations. Fast forward to around 4,500 years ago, and Britain experiences another significant cultural and genetic shift. The Beaker people, named after their distinctive pottery, arrive in Britain from the Iberian Peninsula, modern-day Spain and Portugal. This culture was influenced by people from the Eurasian steppe who had earlier migrated westward into Europe. Genetically, this new group of people brought with them traits like lighter skin, blue eyes, and the ability to digest lactose in adulthood, something that wasn't common in earlier populations. This was a huge shift as these genetic traits became more widespread and they persist in much of the modern English population. A famous archaeological find from this time is the Amesbury Archer, a beaker man buried near Stonehenge. His grave, filled with rich burial goods, suggests that he was an important figure. His DNA provides further evidence of the mixing of native populations with newcomers from the continent, creating a new genetic landscape in Britain. This period saw not just the introduction of new cultural practices, but also a massive influx of new genetic material, reshaping the population in ways that still influence us today. As we move into the Bronze and Iron Ages, migrations continued to play a role in shaping the genetic landscape of Britain. 
Between 1,308-75 BC, another wave of people arrived in Britain, further increasing the ancestry from the early European farmers, particularly in southern England. This influx is believed to have introduced the Celtic languages to the British Isles, which would later evolve into the languages spoken by the Britons, the pre-Roman inhabitants of England. The Celtic Britons left a lasting cultural legacy, particularly in the southwest and western regions of England. They spoke a language called Common Britonic, from which modern Welsh, Cornish, and Breton languages are descended. While the genetic contribution of these Celtic peoples is often difficult to separate from earlier populations, their cultural impact on Britain was profound. Though the Celts did not leave as large a genetic footprint as some later groups, their influence on place names, traditions, and early British identity remained significant. The Roman invasion that followed in 43 AD would bring even more changes to the island, but the Celtic Britain's mark on the history of England can still be felt today. The Roman conquest of Britain in 43 AD is one of the most well-documented invasions in history. For nearly 400 years, Roman rule transformed Britain's infrastructure, governance, and culture. Roads, baths, towns, and fortifications sprang up across the land, and Latin began to influence the local languages. However, despite their profound cultural influence, the Romans left surprisingly little genetic impact on the population of Britain. While there were certainly Roman soldiers, merchants, and settlers who made Britain their home, the population didn't change drastically. Roman occupation was more about governance and cultural integration than population replacement. Most Britons continued to live in rural communities, largely unaffected by Roman genetics, although there was undoubtedly some mixing. When the Roman Empire eventually fell, Britain was left vulnerable to new waves of invasions. The departure of Roman troops left a power vacuum that would soon be filled by other groups, setting the stage for one of the most significant genetic shifts in English history, the Anglo-Saxon invasions. In the 5th and 6th centuries, as the Roman Empire weakened, Germanic tribes known as the Angles, Saxons, and Jutes began migrating to Britain from what is now modern-day Germany and Denmark. This migration marked one of the most significant genetic shifts in the history of England. The Anglo-Saxons settled primarily in the southern and eastern parts of the country, bringing with them new language, customs, and most importantly, their DNA. Genetic studies suggest that up to 40% of the modern English gene pool can be traced back to these Anglo-Saxon migrants. This wave of migration also introduced new Y-DNA haplogroups, particularly our 1B and I1, which are common in English men today. This influx of Anglo-Saxon DNA created a new genetic identity in England, one that would shape the population for centuries to come. The Anglo-Saxon period also saw the birth of Old English, the language that would eventually evolve into the English we speak today. This period was a time of great cultural and genetic change, as the Anglo-Saxons laid the foundation for what would become medieval England. However, they were not the last group to leave their mark on English genetics. The Vikings were soon to follow. The Viking Age, beginning in the late 8th century, brought Scandinavian raiders, settlers, and traders to the shores of Britain. These Norsemen, from present-day Norway, Denmark, and Sweden, established settlements, particularly in northern and eastern England, in places like York and the surrounding region known as the Danelaw. Culturally, the Vikings had a significant influence on Britain. Place names, language, and customs from this period still exist in parts of England today. However, genetically speaking, the Viking legacy is less pronounced than the earlier Anglo-Saxon migrations. While some regions, particularly in the north, show higher percentages of Scandinavian ancestry, the overall genetic contribution of the Vikings is relatively small in comparison to the Anglo-Saxons. Still, the Viking invasions left a lasting impact on British culture and history. The blending of Viking, Anglo-Saxon, and Celtic traditions during this period would eventually give rise to the unified Kingdom of England. But before that could happen, another invasion was on the horizon, the Normans. In 1066, England was once again changed forever by an invasion. The Norman Conquest, led by William the Conqueror, brought a new ruling class to England. Normans were originally Vikings who had settled in northern France, Normandy, and adopted French customs and language. When they took control of England, 
they reshaped its governance, legal system, and aristocracy. However, like the Romans before them, the Normans had a relatively limited genetic impact on the wider population. The Normans primarily influenced the elite class, establishing themselves as rulers and landowners. Over time, they intermarried with the Anglo-Saxon nobility, creating a new aristocracy. While their genetic footprint is small, the Norman legacy can still be seen in English surnames, architecture, and the legal system. The Normans also introduced the French language, which influenced the development of Middle English and added thousands of French words to the English vocabulary. Though the Normans' time as conquerors was relatively short-lived, their cultural and political influence is still felt in England today. So, after thousands of years of migrations, invasions, and cultural changes, what does the genetic makeup of modern English people look like? On the paternal side, the most common Y-DNA haplogroup in English men is our 1B, a lineage that traces back to the Beaker people and later migrations. This haplogroup is common across Western Europe, showing the shared ancestry of people across the continent. On the maternal side, mitochondrial DNA haplogroups like H and U5 are common in modern English people. These haplogroups connect the population to ancient groups like the Neolithic farmers and the Western hunter-gatherers, showing the long-lasting genetic contributions of these early populations. Autosomal DNA, which combines genetic information from both parents, paints an even more complex picture. It reveals that the modern English gene pool is a mix of hunter-gatherers, early European farmers, Beaker people, Anglo-Saxons, and Vikings, with smaller contributions from later groups like the Normans. This genetic diversity reflects the long and complex history of migration and mixing that has shaped England over thousands of years. In addition to DNA, surnames offer another way to trace ancestry and history. Many English surnames have their origins in the Norman conquest. Names like Beaumont and Sinclair can be traced back to Norman families who settled in England after 1066. These names are often linked to places or titles, reflecting the Norman influence on the English aristocracy. Anglo-Saxon surnames like Johnson, meaning son of John, or Smith, which refers to a blacksmith, are much more common and reflect the everyday life of medieval England. These names often describe occupations or family relationships giving us insight into the lives of ordinary people during the Anglo-Saxon period. Celtic and Viking influences can also be seen in English surnames. Norse-derived names like Thorpe, meaning village, are still found in parts of northern England, while Celtic names like Wallace and Trevor are reminders of the ancient Britons who lived in Britain before the Romans and Anglo-Saxons. Surnames provide a fascinating link to the past, offering clues about where our ancestors lived, what they did, and how they identify themselves. The genetic history of England is a rich and complex tapestry woven from thousands of years of migrations, invasions, and cultural changes. From the Western hunter-gatherers who recolonized the land after the Ice Age to the Anglo-Saxons, Vikings, and Normans who left their mark in later centuries, each group has contributed to the DNA of modern English people. Understanding this genetic journey helps us appreciate the diversity and depth of English history. It reminds us that the English population, like all human populations, is the result of countless migrations and cultural exchanges over millennia. So, whether you're fascinated by ancient DNA, historical migrations, or just curious about your own ancestry, England's genetic story is one worth exploring. Be sure to subscribe for more videos on genetic history, and feel free to suggest topics you'd like us to explore next. Thank you for watching.